In this video, we are going to review the journal entries that we have done as a result of our variance analyses. We are going to post those journal entries, look at how they all fit together, and hopefully tie this up and give you a big picture of how variances actually work. So let's start out with a clean screen and begin with our direct material journal entries. So here are the direct material journal entries that we did when we were looking at the direct material variances. And let's just talk about each of these one more time. I'd like to either post them or in the case of the variances, we're going to close them using a journal entry. So the direct materials inventory, remember that we purchased 50,000 yards of fabric and we put it into inventory at its standard cost of $6 a yard. So that's where the $300,000 came from. I would like to post this to a T account and I'm going to go ahead and just do a little check mark here showing that it's been posted. And so it went into direct materials inventory at its standard cost. I'm going to skip the payables and receivables when we go through and post these. We're just going to talk about the actual income statement and inventory type accounts. So the next thing we have is a cost variance. Now the thing about this cost variance is that it was for the full 50,000 yards that we purchased, even though we didn't use that many. So in this case, instead of just closing it out, I'm going to post this as well to our cost variance T account. We moved into WIP. The amount of direct materials needed to make 12,000 jogging suits at standard cost, which was 12,000 suits times 3.5 yards each times $6. And that's where we got that $252,000 from. So that goes into WIP and I'm going to post that and it came out of our direct materials inventory at a standard cost. So what we have left in direct materials inventory is 5,000 yards at a standard cost of $6 a yard. Let's go back to the cost variance now and think about it for a minute. We reduced the inventory by 45,000 yards and the actual difference between standard cost and actual cost was 20 cents a yard. So 45,000 suits times 20 cents a yard gives us $9,000 that we should journalize as a variance. We're going to close that amount of this variance out. And what we'll have left in inventory is 5,000 yards at that 20 cents a yard. So we have 5,000 yards at the standard cost of six, but because we only bought it for $5.80 a yard, we also have that cost variance sitting in here as a thousand reducing it. So the net value of our inventory right now is 5,000 yards times that $5.80 a yard, which is $29,000. Now what we're going to do with that $9,000 is we're going to journalize it. We're going to debit it to close it out. And I'm just going to start a journal entry over here and we'll build on that journal entry as we continue to move through this process. So the next thing that we want to look at is the direct material quantity variance. It's got a debit balance of $18,000. Instead of doing a T account and then closing it out, since we're going to close the whole thing, let's just add that to our journal entry. We're just going to close it out by crediting it. So we're going to add that to this journal entry that we're building the direct material quantity variance by crediting at $18,000. We zero it out. And since I didn't post that, I'm going to use a different symbol. I'm going to use this symbol to show that I put it directly into a journal entry. Okay, let's move on to direct labor. So here are our direct labor journals. And remember that for work in process, we put 12,000 suits into work in process with a standard two direct labor hours and a standard $18 per direct labor hour. That's the $432,000. So let's go ahead and post that journal entry 
to whip. And then we have a price variance, direct labor price variance, and a direct labor efficiency variance. Both of those are debit balances. In both cases, we would like to just close those variance accounts out. So I've done that by adding them to the journal entry that we're building and by adding that symbol that shows we didn't post it to a T account, we just zeroed it out directly. Again, we're going to skip wages payable. Now let's go ahead and move on to variable manufacturing overhead. And remember that the first one is how much we actually incurred. And so let's go ahead and post that to an overhead T account. We're going to skip the payable as usual. Now we moved it into WIP at its standard cost, 12,000 suits times a standard of two direct labor hours times our predetermined overhead rate of four gives us $96,000. And that's how that $96,000 was calculated. We're gonna go ahead and post that to our WIP account. And we're going to take it out of manufacturing overhead, right like that. And then we had some variances that we need to take care of because we wanted to zero out our manufacturing overhead. So we have a variable manufacturing overhead efficiency variance that has a debit balance in it. To zero that out, I need to credit it. We have a spending variance that has a credit balance in it. To zero that out, I need to debit it. So I've added those to the journal entry that we're building. And I put in the symbols showing that we directly zeroed those out instead of posting them to a T account. And now I want to post the $14,000 to my manufacturing overhead account. And when I do that, I end up with a zero balance. So we've zeroed out our manufacturing overhead. Now I have just one manufacturing overhead account. You could have two, you could have manufacturing overhead control and manufacturing overhead applied or allocated. You could actually have four because you could split it into variable and fixed or you could have two, one for variable, one fixed. I'm just putting it all together in one manufacturing overhead holding account since it's zero at the end of each period anyway. Next, we wanna move on to our fixed manufacturing overhead. And here we have those journal entries. So the actual amount of overhead that we incurred was $55,000. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as being posted. And that came out of accounts payable and other accounts. We're not going to post those, like I said. We put this into WIP at its standard, 12,000 suits times two standard direct labor hours times a predetermined overhead rate of three. So let me post that to WIP. And I'm going to take it out of MOH. Then we needed to zero out MOH. So I'm going to post the 17,000 over here to MOH. And of course that gives us another $0 balance. And the variances are both credit balance variances. So I need to debit both of them and add the symbol showing that I have just added those to the journal entry that we are building on the right. The next thing that we need to do that we haven't done yet is move everything from work in process into cost of goods sold. But before we do that, I just want to talk about what the standard cost of each unit is one more time. So I've created a little standard cost table where we can go through it one more time, each item one at a time. Direct materials is three and a half yards per suit times $6 per yard, so that's $21. Direct labor is two hours per suit times $18 is $36. Variable manufacturing overhead, two hours per suit times a predetermined overhead rate of four is eight. And fixed manufacturing overhead in a standard costing environment, we treat this like it's a variable cost. We apply it to each unit two hours standard times a predetermined overhead rate of three gives us six. And when I sum that, I get 71. Well, we did 12,000 units. So if I take that amount times 12,000 units, I get $852,000. So I need to do a journal entry moving that from my cost of goods sold into my work in process at standard cost. And there it is. 
cost of goods sold. So let's go ahead and post that. We can debit cost of goods sold for the standard amount. We're going to credit WIP for the standard amount. Let me check both of those off. And then I'm going to sum this. And if I take the sum of these amounts, it's 852,000. And so what I have is a zero balance in WIP. We moved everything into WIP at standard cost. We move it out of WIP and into cost of goods sold at standard cost. The last journal entry that I'd like to do that we didn't do before was our sales journal entry. And let's just take a quick look at the selling price variance one more time. Or we have an accounts receivable of $1,320,000. And our standard or expected revenue was $1,050,000. And then we have a couple of variances in the middle. Let's go ahead and just journalize this the way we did all the other journal entries, pulling it right off of this table. And here is that journal entry. So we debited accounts receivable, 1,320,000, credited sales revenue, 1,050,000, ,000. the price variance was favorable, 60,000, the volume variance was favorable, 210,000, and let's go ahead and post those to T accounts as well. So I posted all of those and I just need to check them off to show that they are posted. We have one more journal entry that we're working on off to the side here. We need it to balance. So when we go through and we add up all of the credits and subtract all of the debits, we can see that we are out of balance by $144,000. And assuming that this is immaterial or that all of these variances were avoidable, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just debit cost of goods sold. And you'll notice I did not put the selling variances, sales price variance and sales volume variance in here because we don't want to post those to cost of goods sold. They're not a cost. They are a price or a revenue. So now what I want to do is I want to post this last little journal entry, cost of goods sold. Let's go ahead and pop that one in there and then sum our cost of goods sold after the adjustment is $996,000. Okay, what do we have left in inventory? We have no finished goods inventory. I didn't even move it through finished goods inventory. I took it straight from WIP into cost of goods sold. We have our direct material inventory. We've already explained that. Our WIP inventory is zero. So the only thing we have left is direct materials to start the new quarter with or the new year with. And now let's do a little mini income statement. So our net sales are going to be the 1,050,000 for sales revenue, plus that sales price variance, plus that sales volume variance. That gives us a net sales of $1,320,000. Our cost of goods sold, we're gonna pull right from our T account, is $996,000. And when I take the difference, I get $324,000 as our gross margin. Let's go ahead and compare that quickly to where we started this whole process. Okay, we're back to our original expanded budget with our flex budget variance and our sales volume variance. And when we've posted all of these journal entries, we end up with net sales of 1,320,000, which matches our actual results. Our cost of goods sold is $996,000, and our gross margin is $324,000, which matches our actual results. So the process of doing all of this takes us from our standard to our actual. So why did we do it all? We did it because the process makes us focus on where we have deviated from standard. So we can go back in and we can investigate each of these variances. There may be reasons for the variances that will cause us to change our standards. There may be reasons for the variances that will cause us to change our processes. There may be reasons for the variances that are one-time issues that we should be aware of, but we will just move forward as though they won't happen again because they were accidents or they were avoidable problems that shouldn't happen again we can look at those overhead variances and see if we need to adjust our capacity or change our 
production mix. Maybe we should be budgeting for more nylon jogging suits and fewer silk jogging suits. Or maybe we should be changing our prices and selling these for a higher amount. Whatever it is, the variances allow us to pinpoint where we need to focus our attention. And that is the entire point of management by exception, where we go in and anything that is running smoothly, we can give less attention to, and anything that varies or differs from our plan, we focus our attention on. And that is the end of variance analysis with a single product.